Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the masterclass. Today, we're going to be learning how to sync and have flow in your montage. This is something I've never done on my channel, actually showing you step by step on how I sync my clips exactly the way I do. I'm super excited and I know you are too, so let's not waste any time and get right into it. So firstly, I just wanna say, I'm gonna have all the clips I'm using in the description below for you guys to download for free and follow along at home. And I am personally going to be using Adobe After Effects, but you can use whatever software you like. This can be done in most editing softwares, although After Effects is definitely the best. And lastly, this is how I sync my montages. Obviously, if you don't like my syncing style, then this tutorial isn't for you. But if you do, let's get right into it. So in the folder that you download from the description, it should have four clips in it, a text document, a test clip, and a song. What I'm going to be doing first is showing you exactly how I sync with the test clip. Then once we've got down the basics, we can grab the four clips and the song and make a montage. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up After Effects. And when you open up After Effects, it should look a little something like this. And what we're gonna do is just grab that test clip and just drag it into the project panel right there and then drag it to the timeline. That's step one done. Now syncing on After Effects is actually called time remapping. So whenever I wanna time remap a clip on After Effects, the first thing I do is actually mute the layer. Basically because once you time remap a clip, all the audio gets all like muddled up. And in order to time remap something on After Effects, all you wanna do is click on the layer on the timeline, press Control Alt T on your keyboard. And as you can see, the little time remap icon has popped up here. And as long as you're zoomed out, which you can use this little zoom icon here, as long as you're zoomed out, you should have seen that it's placed a keyframe at the start of your clip and a keyframe at the end of your clip. Now what we can do from here is actually to go to the part of the clip in which I feel like the clip starts. So probably right about here. So as I'm running up to the bot, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the left here and I'm going to place a keyframe. So now there's a point in time at 22 seconds in which I've placed a keyframe. And then I'm going to go to probably my first sync point, which is gonna be right after I edit this wall. So as soon as my character brings this weapon out right here, I'm going to place another keyframe and then I'm going to scroll a bit more forward and get it right as I get the kill. So right as I'm pulling out my pickaxe there, I'm going to place another keyframe. So now you can see if I zoom in on the timeline, you can see my first keyframe here where the clip starts, my second one right here where I open the edit and the third keyframe right as I get the kill. And that's step two done. So step three, all we need to do is delete the initial keyframes that got placed. So the one at the started clip, we don't need that anymore. And also the one at the end. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and trim the start of the clip to my first keyframe as well as trim at the end of the clip. I'm going to bring it right back to the start. So now as you can see if we just play the clip back it's just going to play the section that we cut out. But because we place those keyframes we can go ahead and click on the time remap icon there to make sure it's highlighted and then we can click this button here which is the graph editor. Now this is where all the magic happens. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a whole lot bigger. You pretty much want the graph editor as big as you can possibly make it. So let's just play around with the graph editor a little bit. So you can see if I grab this first keyframe and I move it upwards, you can see that the clip actually goes forward. So the higher the keyframe is, the more into the clip you're going to get. So I can move this keyframe up and it moves the clip forwards. I can also move the keyframe backwards and it takes my clip backwards. I can also do this to other keyframes. So if I just move my playhead to the middle, as you can see, I can grab this keyframe in the middle and I can actually move it. And as you can see, if I move it up, it goes forwards. If I move it back, it goes backwards. But what we're actually trying to do is sync the clip. But in order to do that, we need some nice smooth curves. So in order to get some smooth curves, all you gotta do is just hold the Alt key and click on any one of your keyframes. I'm just gonna click on this first keyframe. And as you can see, it's got a little yellow line coming out of it and that's a pick whip. So we can grab that pick whip and look, now we're making curves. So now we can actually manipulate the motion between each keyframes, and this is what's gonna give us our syncing. So I'm actually gonna grab this pick whip and face it upwards like this, and now the clip's gonna start off really fast and then all of a sudden get really slow. So I'm then gonna do the same with this middle keyframe. I'm gonna hold the Alt key and I'm gonna click on it and it's gonna give me two pick whips. 
and I'm gonna be able to just move these however I want and I'm gonna be able to create a kind of flowing motion. So as you can see, slow-mo and then speeds up to the kill. Now it just cuts off there. We're actually gonna want one more keyframe at the end. So I'm just gonna hold the control key and just click on this line here. That creates another keyframe. I'm just gonna play around with this a bit just to get a nice slow-mo at the end. Now if your slow-mo is looking a little bit laggy, all you need to do is literally just click this twice until you see this icon. And now when we play it back, it's actually gonna have frame blending and it's gonna make it way smoother. So my character actually starts too far away from the wall. So this first keyframe, I'm actually gonna move it up a bit and I actually want it closer to the other keyframes. So I'm gonna move it up to here and I'm actually gonna move it across to about there. So now we're gonna have a lot quicker motion as you can see it's just sync, two, one, two, just like that. And I can also make the impact a lot harsher by dragging this pick whip over to make this line a lot more harsh here. So now when I play it back, it's gonna snap a lot more to that kill. So as you can see, it's like snaps to the kill. Bang, just like that. Also, if I wanted the clip to be even slower after the kill, I could just drag this fourth keyframe all the way down so the line is even flatter. So after the kill, it's gonna be ultra slow-mo now. So that is really the basics of syncing. By the way, if you wanna see me edit montages live, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button with the notifications on so you don't miss out on those live streams. Let's get back to it. The best advice I could give to you guys and the way that I got good at syncing is just live in graph editor. Literally, just make that thing take up the whole monitor make sure you're always zoomed in and if something doesn't look right just move it around maybe drag the pick whip just see what the pick whips do maybe add in another keyframe and just like play around with it get a feel for it that is the best way to get good at it all right but now it's time to use this syncing technique grab the four clips grab the song and make a montage All right, so new project. I'm gonna go straight to composition, new composition, and I'm going to make it 30 frames per second. If you wanna know why I edit in 30 frames per second, you can go watch episode one of the masterclass where I talk all about what FPS to use and why. I'm going to drag my four clips in, drag my song in, and first things first, drag the song onto the timeline and mark out the sync points. So I've made some little markers that I'm going to be using for each clip. And basically I just use these markers as reference points for when I actually do the time remapping. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag my first clip and pretty much take what we've just learnt and apply it to this montage. Alrighty, so my recording says it's been about 15 minutes and I've pretty much synced this clip. So here's the original clip. As you can see, shout out to the homie Loyals. So impulse into flint knock into blow, pretty clean. And here it is, sync to the song. And also, if you find these tutorials helpful, then consider using my credit code FLEE in the item shop. That'd be awesome. So as you can see, that is definitely my syncing style. And I did that in about 15 minutes. Although when I started After Effects, that would have taken me like two hours. If I just zoom in here, you can see that there's a keyframe for pretty much every marker here. And if we just go into the graph editor and I click on time remap, you can see that it's pretty much exactly what we did with the test clip, but just multiple times. And it's pretty much all just about grabbing these pick whips and just tweaking them in the slightest and just moving these along until you get the sync exactly how you want it to. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and sync the rest of these clips and I'll see you when I'm done. All right, so about half an hour later, we're done. Let's check it out. So as you can see, if I just make this bigger, the time remap on every single clip is pretty much the exact same. So I'm going through all the time remaps and they all look very similar. Now, this isn't the only way to sync, but this is what I've done for a lot of montages. A lot of people seem to like it, but let's see how it turned out.
So that is pretty much it. That is the flea sinking tutorial. Don't worry, you're not gonna get it first try. It did take me a while to get used to doing this in After Effects, but once you get the hang of it, it's really easy and looks awesome on montages. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'm gonna be helping a lot of you out down there. If not, let me know what other tutorials you'd like to see. I'm gonna start pumping tutorials out now and I'm super excited for it. If you would like to see episode one of the masterclass where I cover literally everything, you can check that out right here. Or you could check out one of my fire montages where you can see the sync that we just did in action. If you did make it all the way to the end of the video, drop a watermelon emoji in the comments so I know you did. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.